clear that camera manufacturers don't want you to know, and they're willing to do anything to keep you from finding out. I'm kidding, it's, it's color grading. It's always color grading. In this video, we're going to use GH Alex to improve the color of your videos. First set of GH Alex in 2018 as adjusted the scene targeting the GH5 and GH5S. Back then, my main camera was a Motorola G7, which is now just as worn as it was then. It wasn't so much the $35 as the cost of the body was far beyond what I used. The look of the sample images and videos was amazing, and I love the output colors here. The RLX has one of the best cameras for color in the world, alongside being one of the most expensive for that cost. As a software guy, I'm always on board with things that allow you to keep your existing hardware around for longer, and I'm always looking for ways to continue using what I already own. In 2022, I reached out to a Motive Color because I wanted to make use of GH Alex or any of their products targeting professional cameras. It turns out my G7 and GX85 are compatible in state of the world. This is not a sponsored video, I'm just making a video and adapting this workflow. The biggest thing here was how good the footage was and it made multi-cam flows using drones, action cams, and even phone footage difficult. So I still have to change that. Before we dive in, GH Alex comes in three versions, Daylight, Tungsten, and 4200, but I find that the late light one works fine for artificial LED. Instead of each of these, you will find a regular, theatrical, and ARRI Log C equivalent. Today's video is going to go through a basic workflow on how to color code all of your footage to make use of GH Alex, bringing GH Alex everywhere. I had previously teased in another video by testing out in the park, and that's what this video is about. The G7's native Cine D and GX85's CAC Cine D work wonders here as expected, and we're going to drift from there to drones. A lot of this footage was shot at the same time in the same place, so you can go back and forth and see what the overall likeness for some of these. DJI's professional drones like the Mavic 3 Pro and Air 2S support shooting in D-Log format, so take the D-Log conversion that's in the files and use it to turn your D-Log footage to V-Log. Apply the GH Alex process as if it was Panasonic footage and the results may or may not be to your liking. I found that even with D-Log, the footage was still oversaturated, so there's an attached D-Log desaturated version which will desaturate your footage a bit. DJI's less professional drones like the Mini 3 Pro or Avada support d format that take the d conversion in the files and take your V-Log footage follow the same process as GS Alex recommends. Be aware this footage was given to me, so it's not in the same place as others. Last but not least, the DJI Mini 2 and Skydio 2 do not offer any options for tweaking the output, aside from using Leachy to change the saturation on the Mini 2. So for these, there's a Rec. 709 to V-Log conversion along with the desaturated version. This is a double-edged sword because applying these won't bring the data that you didn't capture to start with. However, you can now use any footage you've ever taken in the past and recalibrate it to our colors. Sorry guys, I need the hardware. But you know what really helps? Um, you can actually do your color grading. There's this red subscribe button, and if you press it, it's actually. Action cameras are next with the Osmo Action using the same D Cine conversion that I recommended for the Mini 3 Pro and Avada. GoPro Hero 8's flat profile also has a corresponding GoPro profile, although I recommend desaturating a bit, especially if you're trying to use this on newer GoPros, as the saturation of those is particularly high even when flat. I shot both of these using VNDs from the channel update video at the same location as some of the drone shots. Phones can also get the same treatment. My Motorola G7 was capable of capturing 4K FPS footage using open camera's medium block profile. However, I couldn't quite find the exact gamma values, so I had to manually tweak it until I got close enough. The iPhone 5S was capable of capturing some modest 1080p 24 FPS footage using Adobe Premiere Brush's camera and using the Rec. 709 to V-Log conversion. Find these phones are amazing with a cheap BMD filter and you can use them uh, with a little tripod, like especially these that you can like wrap around a tree. Last but not least is webcams. Camo Studio has already been talked about during the e-waste video. Unfortunately, it only offers support for tweaking saturation and sharpness on the paid pro version. I'll send it over to Pass Me to tell you about it. Their product, uh, the biggest thing that I needed was the image adjustments here. GH Alex requires saturation to be tuned a little bit. I've put it around half. And then your sharpness is slightly lower, around zero, negative 0 0.25. Uh, once you have that feed, you can feed it into OBS Studio and then create a video capture device from it. I select the camo, go over the filters, and then you can apply LUTs down here. I've used the Rec. 709 Panasonic Vlog and the GH Alex's uh, conversion uh, to get me the daylight conversion. Now you could use the, uh, the theatrical version, which gives you a little bit nicer color. But if you look at these side by side, you'll see that the Ari, uh, it's just, you get the Ari-like colors. Uh, lighting is not perfect here because I am using a red light. Um, 
but you can tweak your settings and mess with your lights until you get the color that you want. Um, you do need Camel Studio Pro for these uh, for these settings. So in the next step, I'm making sure to do it without Camel Studio Pro. But if you already have Camel Studio Pro, you can feed that directly into OBS Studio and then have the OBS uh, virtual camera go out and do whatever you need. If Camel Studio isn't your liking or your price range, or you need a truly wireless experience, OBS that Ninja was brought up alongside Camel Studio, and pass me has some info on how to color grade that. Here's OBS that uh, Ninja. So we've got uh, just a browser source, and if you look at the settings here, it's just that, and then you get the width and the height from the uh, setup on the OBS that Ninja side. It deals with everything, but what you get is Rec 709 with nothing applied. So we want to do two things. We're gonna add two LUTs here. We're gonna apply the um, the Rex 709, 709 saturated to VLOG first, uh, which is included in the package that you have seen. So we're gonna go look at it. Uh, Rex 709 desaturated to Panasonic VLOG. And there you go, I'm super desaturated and in VLOG format. And then we can add a new filter here, which will give you GH Alex. Now we can apply the LUT. Now there is um, a follow up filter that you have to add for fixing the black levels, but I am just showing you how to do this the easy way. Once you get the uh, once you get the, the pack, you will be able to mess around and read the documentation, which you really should. And there we go. We now have a um, uh, Rec 709 to VLOG conversion, and we are now getting the airy colors. Now, in order to show you, I'm gonna open up a tab so you can see what this uh, looks like. Uh, this is what that looks like in terms of a difference between uh, the difference between the, uh, the OBS and upscale so there you can see some of the colors are less uh, saturated and more airy like so if you like this kind of uh, style you can if you also want you can also uh, try the non desaturated um, version I have found that sometimes the desaturation is a bit too much so you can also try the Rec 709 to Panasonic Vlog although you might not like the ones that's it for standard OBS. You don't have to pay anything for this. OBS that is just free. You can add it to your thing. Um, you could actually have a feed that's just wirelessly connected. So you could, you know, take the phone and just stick it outside and have a feed of the outside in your stream or whatnot. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's it for now. This workflow is basic. I'm sure there's improvements that you can come up with for your camera, but it works for me when I'm trying to fuse data from two or two different devices for showing them on the same screen. However, if you think I missed an amazing camera or you would like to figure out how to turn your camera's video into VLARG for this process, please leave a comment because I'm planning on doing a simple tutorial on how to generate these conversions. Here's some leftover shots from other outings to compare.